All right, welcome to today's uh, book of the day show, but I got something even better than a book for you today. I got a real live real estate genius. So Cole here uh, is in my house. I brought him in the backyard. This is where all the good stuff is talked about. So I'm letting you in and we're talking about how millions are made in real estate by somebody who you were a par uh, fireman, got in an accident, car accident, driver didn't have insurance, uh, in a wheelchair, never knew if he'd walk, and now you've done what, 100, 200 real estate deals, millions of dollars, uh, also teaches stuff, so sold over $100 million worth of, uh, of, of products. And so, um, I wanna talk for a second about real estate. Now, here's the deal. On YouTube and my podcast like this, um, I don't put all my stuff just because I have lots of stuff that's only for people in the premium program, my accelerator 67 steps. So I've just been recorded for an hour and a half with Cole. It's so good. And I don't like to put super long stuff on YouTube because people are like ADD. So if you're in the accelerator program, you can hear the full version. But this is so good that I was like, I gotta let I got a lot of 12 year olds watching. This is the stuff that you need to know. And we've got a friend of yours, a student, Legacy, who's here. He's, a, he's a, a professional dancer, dance for Missy Elliott. Last two years made 300 grand on the side in real estate. So, let's start this one and you gotta go. This is, people you wanna hear from are busy. Cole's a busy man, so I convinced him to stay exactly 15 minutes. I'm not gonna do a full 15. You're in a wheelchair. Yep. Not sure if you can walk. Now, you millions and millions and millions. What was the first step did you just you didn't have any money. You got an investor, hard money, soft money. First step was getting an education. Um, and we talked about that with your accelerator video that, uh, you know, I don't think people really respect real estate. I think that they think because they've lived in a home probably their whole lives or most of their lives, <laughs> excuse me, that they think, oh, how hard could it be? I'll just buy, fix it, and sell it. But there are many nuances and little itsy bitsy uh, integral details of, of real estate that, I mean, Let's just talk about it. The, the thought is, oh, I'll just learn it through trial and error. But trial and error in real estate means losing money. Yes. So I would say before anybody even tries to raise dollars, go learn on how to present to lenders. Yes. And there are many, you know, there's a ton of education out there in real estate. And we talked about some of the other videos. But so I would say, and that's what I did. When I was in a wheelchair. So you're in a wheelchair. You just, I literally you wheeled YouTube, into a seminar. Books, I went seminars? to a two-day okay. seminar. I forget how much I paid. But I went, I rolled in in a wheelchair to a two-day seminar. And that was where my real estate uh, career began. Uh, watching several different speakers on stage and some of them you said weren't even that good in the, like now looking back yeah, like, yeah but they got you started but I was what I could afford at the time and I was just hungry to learn the industry of real estate I knew that more millionaires were created in real estate than anything else and that on paper it's where most people's net worth can be found so I said screw it I'm in let's do it and uh, so I started learning it started learning how to pitch to people started building my network by going to different communities where real estate people hang out. What was it, REIA, R-E-I-A? Yeah, R-E-I-A, Real Estate Investor Associations. Some are better than others, some are a complete waste of time, others are a phenomenal place to network and build your business. But if you want to build a business in any industry, you need to start getting around those people, yes. right? So if I wanted to go do something unrelated to real estate, I would have to find other people in that industry, yes. communities to plug into to start building my network. So I would say number one, build your network, and number two, learn the fundamentals of the business so that you can actually have an articulate conversation with someone yes. and not look like a complete novice, which even if you are, they say fake it till you make it. Can't really fake it in real estate because someone like me will call you out in 10 seconds that you don't know anything. Yeah. And so you need to get that foundation of some education before anyone in any industry will take uh, you seriously. So. And we're talking for a second. So what I'm gonna do, by the way, guys, I'm gonna put a few clips from the full one. It's so good. So. Uh, for those of you that aren't in, in any of the premium programs that I have, I'm an, I don't, usually don't do this, but I'm going to put a handful of, you know, five or ten minutes of the best stuff we just talked about because you're so busy. I was going to record a new one, but Cole's got millions to make. The best That's advice you get for people is for people that go, I, I, I'll tell you a true story, real estate. My buddy did a deal with Donald Trump. So, uh, Donald Trump. He said, I was sitting outside of Donald Trump's office and Donald Trump was in there screaming at somebody in the phone. He goes, oh man, I don't think this is a good day to meet Donald Trump. Donald Trump, he said, I walked in. Originally it was a 20 or 30 minute meeting. Donald Trump goes, I'm busy, you got 30 seconds. And my friend had knowledge, he came correct, as you would say on the street, he came correct. And he impressed Donald Trump and said, ah, go to lunch with me. And so you can't fake knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm gonna, in this little clip, we're gonna put some clips on, you know, what are future trends? Should you buy uh, a single family property? Should you 
whole buy and hold, you give some strategies on that. Should you flip stuff? Should you rehab? You're doing a lot of what? What's your fit? What's oh, your favorite? I, I buy, rehab, and sell, and then I buy and hold. And kind of mid level, you said you like. Yeah, mid level, affordable homes. You know, somewhere that middle class America could live in comfortably. I don't so, what's wanna... that price for? Like two to four hundred? Well, it depends. I invest all across the country. So, you know, in Columbus, Ohio, we're talking hundred and twenty to hundred eighty thousand dollar homes. In yeah. Southern California, we're talking five hundred to eight hundred thousand dollar homes, and everywhere in between. But something where, you know, the uh, working class of America can, not, nothing like this, because you know, one hundredth of one percent of Americans can buy this, and so I might be stuck holding onto it longer than I want. But something that. Yes, do not try to get a house like this. Dude, before people see this house now, but trust me, I slept, I lived in a mobile home for a long time. I also lived with, with no electricity or toilet, outhouse for five years of my life. Not yeah. when I was a little kid either. So that what I have now is forget it and it's it's cool but the most important thing is momentum in life so sure. you created momentum what was the what what was the uh well anyway let me just get I'll, you gotta go i'm gonna give you guys clips we're gonna cut it in if you're not in the accelerator i'm gonna put a link get inside the accelerator you can click on my site it costs some money i give a lot of stuff i give 90 percent of my stuff away for free on youtube and podcast uh but for people who really want to go advanced, you said you spent two hundred thousand dollars in the last ten years on your own education. Yep. So, yeah, get in there. We'll put some clips, and then I'll have a link at the end if you guys want to check out the accelerator. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, man. Cool. Number one, we talk about this. You've got a daughter oh, and thanks. a new daughter on the way. Congratulations. You're going to planet Mars. This is your last day on planet Earth. You're Elon Musk's test man uh, for SpaceX. What are the one or two absolute overarching principles of selling a hundred million dollars or raising a hundred million dollars or whatever that number what what makes you more persuasive than most people so i think when it comes to being individually persuasive you need to look at yourself almost like you are a product mm -hmm. and you need to have like your own unique selling proposition and so the way that I feel that I'm most persuasive from stage is I am very good at creating common commonality. Okay. You're going to be a perfect example of this. Like, look at your lifestyle. Look at your house. Look at your cars. Look at what you do in your presence. It's hard for normal people to relate to you. Right. And so in my own industry, not nearly what you've done, but I have my own success as well. And if I open up of trying to persuade an audience to do something, to buy a product or to work with me or whatever, and I come from this position of, hey guys, you know, I'm the best at what I do, I'm the ish, I'm so successful, you're lucky you even are taking a few of my time. What I've just done is I've put myself on a podium and then below me, mm -hmm. and there's clear separation. Now, I can, through, I can be persuasive through just my success alone, but by creating the distance, people have a hard time uh, seeing themselves being where I am. Yes. If I create such a distance, they say, well, Cole, this all works for you because you are so successful, this is easy. But uh, do, you, do you want me to just keep no, going? No, no. Okay, overall. cool. For those of you watching, this is raw footage. Yeah, I like we're it. real. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> she just brought me a shake. That's awesome. Yeah. So, so here's how I persuade people to do stuff. I have a clear connection for them to where they are to where I am and then being able to make that bridge. Here's how I would start it. Instead, if I was you, I'm going to make this up. Yeah. Um, I would say, you know, hey, you know, I'm Ty Lopez and yeah, I've got all this now, but it wasn't always this way. As a matter of fact, it wasn't too long ago that I was working for someone else in the financial industry. As a matter of fact, before that, I came from very humble beginnings. What I decided to do as an individual like you all here today yeah. was start investing in my education. I started reading books and from nothing, just being an average Joe, just getting by day to day, paycheck to paycheck. What I found is that as I started reading a book a day and started learning, I started discovering more and more ways to create massive profits in my life more doors open for me and today I am you know uh, I have the honor and the, and the privilege of, of being rewarded pretty handsomely for my efforts but I want you all to know I'm just like you I started just like yeah. you and so what I've now done is created commonality like I'm a regular Joe Schmo I'm no different than anyone else here we're all the same we're all up to the same thing we all want to be better versions of ourselves now I'm a few years ahead of some and, I'm, and I've been rewarded handsomely for it and you can have this too but let's remember that it all starts with day one, the decision we're going to make now together. And so I use words not like I and you, but us, we, yes. together. And that commonality really helps me be more persuasive because people feel like I'm just like them, and I am. The only difference between me and my audience of who I'm trying to persuade is simple. 
I've been doing the principles that I'm teaching for longer. Yes. What I'm about to talk about, what I'm about to teach, and this is a perfect fit with you with all the accelerating and all the coaching you do, but what I'm about to teach you is what I've been doing in my own life that's gotten me to this, but it wasn't long ago that I was where you are on your side of the screen watching this video. True story. I mean, for me personally, after firefighting ended, when I was sitting in that wheelchair and, you know, I've thank God today I've had 100% recovery. Everything works fine. But when I was in a wheelchair, not knowing if I walk again or whatever, I literally consumed knowledge. Mm -hmm. I watched videos like yours. I watched everything I could get my hands on. And you I just spent 200 devoured. grand on mentors and coaches and conferences. Yeah, that was collectively over the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, not at first because I had no money, but yeah, true. So, <laughs> so getting 200 bucks is a lot. And what yeah. I could, yeah, I invested in what I could. I started going to seminars is what I really went to weekend seminars and things yeah. like that. And then buying theirs and maxing out a credit card if I needed to, but then doing a deal and paying the credit card off. And so, so that's I like to bring on experts like you about what's worked for you and, and it'll apply to a lot of you. Some sure. of you, it won't apply to you. What's your take on location? Do you go, do you just stick locally to where you know? Do you go national, international? Do you just buy really high end, low end? What do you think? Sure. I think specific to location uh, is determined by your exit strategy. What's your plan? So if I'm going to buy and hold, if I'm going to buy a rental property that I plan to own for five or more years, location's everything. Yes. Another part of what I do in real estate is I'll buy, fix and sell. Uh, and although obviously location matters, we in real estate have areas called war zones, right? Okay. Where, you know, that's not picking on the demographic that lives there. All types of people, you know, size, religion, race, you know, live in these communities. But if you are a real estate investor, it's a business. Yeah. And so if you're going to own a business, you don't want to open it in an area where you're not going to have customers. And yeah. so when I'm buying to fix and sell, I have a lot less thought of where I am specifically geographically buying. So you'll if, buy lower income neighborhoods. Or, or even higher. Sell. So let's talk higher. higher. Okay. So I can buy a beautiful luxury home here in Los Angeles, uh, buy it and turn around and sell it. I just have to do the due diligence to make sure that there's a market, you know, to it on the back end. Once yeah. I've fixed it up and I'm now remarketing it for sale. And right now with the season that we're in, you know, all things look good. There's really not a price that you can come up with in LA that there isn't someone willing to pay for it. But in the rental market, here's what we saw in like 2008 specifically. And any of your audience who uh, lost money in 2008. Yeah. Here's a lot of what happened. If you were buying at the high end as our socioeconomic ladder, as people were downgrading because they were losing jobs or whatever, if you were at the top end, you lost a large pool. Where if you were somewhere in the middle, and again, obviously location based on we're talking middle price point, not necessarily first time home buyer, but middle price point areas, even if those people were going through the recession and no longer afford or able to afford those, the people that were above them are now downgrading and can't. Yeah. And so as far as buy and hold, I would say location matters. Uh, within each city, there's the areas that are affordable. There's the luxury homes, but then there's that middle staple, middle class of America home. That's where I love to buy and hold. Okay. Because no matter what's happening, again, on the socioeconomic ladder, we're in a recession, people are downgrading, they people still from have the top to live. Yeah. are gonna have to live somewhere. Yeah. And if you're in the food, water, or shelter business, you're gonna be good through any economy. Yeah. I'm in the shelter business. Yeah. Unless I price out my marketplace, I have a beautiful home here in Beverly Hills or in you know Malibu on the cliffs yeah. for you know a house I'm selling for 50 million or rents for 100 grand a month. Yeah. Well then obviously in area, eras like 2008, it's gonna be harder to find someone yeah. versus that 2,000, 2,500 square foot home. You might not want to, we're in my backyard. You may not want to start with the highest end stuff unless yes. you got a lot of money to put down. What we're talking about today is the business. Some of you want to step it up. So real estate makes the most money for people who treat it like an entrepreneurial venture. Mm -hmm. So let's start out. You started out with, so you were a fireman, you were hurt, didn't have any money. We talked about the financing. If people want to step up the game now, and they want to you know, make a venture where they're doing this a little more often, maybe full time, but at least part time. Um, let's just start with pitfalls. As you started to go from just one house and you started to go, what are some mistakes that people watching need to avoid right away as you ramp up? I mean, are you borrowing too much money? Do the banks start to freak out on you? Do you get to the place where you're like, holy crap, I need three assistants yeah. Uh, you start making mistakes. What, what can people do to avoid that? I'd start with the last one. So what I found is, and what I, what I see is that a lot of people plateau in real estate pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, you were talking about scaling essentially, you know, instead of being one or two here or there as a hobby, making it a, a full-time income and then providing the lifestyle you want. So you can buy houses like this one, right? And so it, what people need to understand very early in real estate is that it is a time intensive business. It really is. 
Uh, and there's no way around that other than creating systems early. And so what I see a lot of people do is they're hard workers like yourself, they're ambitious, they've, they've got great skill sets, um, maybe invest in some coaching or whatever so they at least have a direction to go in real estate, and they're doing everything themselves. They're, they're going and walking properties, they're meeting contractors, they're going to suppliers, and they themselves are the kingpin, like the glue that holds their whole business together. And that will work for a while, but then all of a sudden you're gonna wake up like I did in 2006, saying I work seven days a week, 10, 12 hour days, and I can't grow my business anymore. Yeah. And I would see individuals like some of my mentors who are making 100 times more than I'm making, and it frustrated me because here I am working 10, 12 hour days, seven days a week, how am I supposed to manufacture more time? Yes. Like I don't get it, I can't. And then I learned pretty early, or not pretty early, sadly, uh, later in my career, but now it's been a while, that uh, I'm only capable of one person's output. And, I'm, and I had a business partner as well, who's my father. The two of us together were only capable of two people's output. Yeah. So we started, number one, integrating technology, which is beautiful about the time that we live in. Yes. Real estate's been around forever, it's a dinosaur. Technology is new and emerging, and we're, we're seeing how to blend the two, hmm. where by using just a basic CRM to handle email responses from inquiries, instead of me having to hammer away at the keyboard to respond to every single so person. So which CRM did you like? Were you? Uh, so getting started, I used, just used Aweber, just very okay. simple. Okay, Aweber. Um, yeah, Aweber's a great CRM. Uh, there's a bunch out there. Now I'm using RealFlow. Uh, RealFlow. Yeah, okay. RealFlow, Real with an E at the end, Flow. Um, which is a subsidiary of one of my mentors um, okay. in their big conglomerate of everything they own. And is it real estate specific? It is specific to real estate. So, so yes. this is for you to manage uh, contractors. It's for you to everything. manage real estate tenants too? Uh, yeah, there's, yeah. A, there's a property management software within it. So.